So here we are, Stonely, first day. Um, already been doing a bit of buying. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's been good so far. Um, everyone's still setting up, so we'll uh, we'll see how it all goes. Um, I'll report back on the end of the day and see what we've managed to pick up so far. Hi guys, so uh, that was a little bit of footage from Stonely, just wandering around, a little bit of footage of the RAF display in the entrance hall. Uh, I didn't get as much footage as I would have liked, unfortunately. Um, just busy, really, just trying to move through the crowds and everything. Uh, didn't really get a chance. Um, so we'll just go straight into the run-through of stuff I picked up at the show. Four uh, 1958 pattern water bottle pouches. Uh, I think one of them has Pura tabs in. That one came with the, the sterilization tablets in. Um, just picked up to do a set replacing the uh, kidney pouches on the back of the belt. They were cheap enough. Um, it shows the place to pick these up cheaply, so I think they were a couple of quid for the four. A slightly more interesting piece of uh, webbing I picked up again. It's 58 pattern. This is a rare beast. Um, it, at first, looking at the the ends on the webbing, um, it looks like a standard, uh, at first glance looks like a standard um, first issue 58 pattern uh, pack, but in fact the press stud gives it away on the quick release on the um, uh, held carrier there, the uh, pickaxe handle carrier on the back there, and or the shovel carrier. Um, it's the trials pattern, which we'll go into in more detail, I uh, don't know if you'll be able to see the, the markings in the... Uh, down at the lower right there. I don't know if you'll be able to see the markings in the, the pack there, um, but you can see there's a, an EXP number, the contract number, and it's Miko 1957. So there we are. We'll have a proper look at that and um, talk about the trial stuff uh, at some point in the uh, in the coming week, probably. Dump that out of the way. A um, couple of brand magazines to go in my uh, brand box. I've still not got a full box, I think, even with those two added in. But um, cheap enough, pick them up. I think they were a five or something like that, uh, which isn't too bad. One of the nicer items I've picked up, uh, number nine, number nine bayonet, um, which is uh, which was twenty pounds, which was was a nice pickup. It's the markings in there, um, in quite nice condition. Need to find a scabbard now, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, I think what else I actually picked up at the show proper. Um, we have we have picked up quite a lot of things that I'd arranged to buy and then just collected on the day. Two pairs of 1950s Royal Navy working trousers, uh, which are in a very large size, too big for me, but to go in the collection because they're in really nice condition. They were a fiver each, which is pretty nice. Um, picked up off a, a friend. Um, what else have we got that I actually picked up at the show as opposed to just collecting on the day? Rummage through all this lot. I think we're, uh, that's pretty much it for stuff uh, uh, found on the day, uh, so we'll get into the stuff I collected. Now I collected a fair bit of PLC, um, green 90s PLC webbing, including uh, the SC80 bayonet in its in the other services. This is in the other services um, scabbard, so I'll need to get a, an infantry one at some point. But they can be picked up. Um, keep an eye out for one of those. Another thing I did pick up at the show while I was there is some RNG. Um, there we go, you can see that RNG SA80 magazines um, to fill out the, uh, the PLCE. 
Again, they were a fiver each, so cheap enough. Um, got this set now, all pretty much 89 dated, which is nice. I say I picked up some extra pouches and another set, so I've condensed them down into one set that's pretty much all 89 dated now. So that was nice. That was a, rain, a sale arranged through Facebook before I, I went to the show um, that was... Uh, that was concluded while I was there. Also in with that lot came a, a load of MVC gear, including some, some boots, uh, over boots. Um, then we've got, let me shift them out of the way, uh, both a sealed and an opened uh, suit MVC, number one Mark IV in DPM. 90, uh, is that 1989? Is that 1990 dated? That one's nice. Uh, the fabric date's 1989, but they were made in 1990, uh, packed in 1990, so open and uh, a uh, sealed version of that and it also have that in Desert DPM which are getting harder to find now um, and the, the packaged ones are dated uh, the fabric date is November 1990 the issue date is May 1991 or the, the packing date so they're they're not really Gulf War issue but they, they are the right pattern uh, I'm trying to find an earlier dated set at some point but they'll do for now so that all came as one big lot with the Gulf War kit um, another bit of MBC gear that came with that is a PLC e Haversack, which was rather nice. It came with an S10 and all the contents, which will be the subject for another video at some point. Um, but it uh, includes the facelift and everything there as well. So, so that will be the subject of a video coming up at some point. Two particularly nice items that I picked up, um, which I've wanted for a while, uh, is... I can get much of this in frame. Uh, this is a... Arctic Bergen, uh, Royal Marine issue Arctic Bergen, which I've done some research on since purchasing it because it was a very good price. It was £30 because the seller believed um, that the frame wasn't original to the, the Bergen. I've done some research yesterday evening this morning uh, and this frame is the earlier type. The reason it looks like it isn't for the Bergen is it's missing. I don't know if you can see there's a hole in the frame here and there's another one up here and there are rods that are supposed to run down through these padded sections which then go through this part of the frame and curve into the side they're missing. But it is the correct early uh, gold coloured um, frame for the uh, the Arctic Bergen. So it's rather nice to have. Uh, I'll need to get the, the waist belt and also the back straps for it, but they could be picked up easily enough and I'm going to see about trying to repair the frame and replace the uh, things. The only one issue with it is one of the D-rings, the plastic D-rings is split. So I'm going to see if I can do something about that. Um, but yeah, for £30, I can't really go wrong for an Arctic Bergen these days. Uh, it needs a little bit of work doing it to it, but not bad at all. And again, that could be the subject of a full video once I've uh, repaired and restored it. And also a Para Bergen, um, which is a rather nice addition to the collection again. £45, which is a good price for them these days, uh, especially considering it's quite nicely and clearly dated. If we can get that in there much room to work with here unfortunately I don't know if you can see there there we go get it in the shade 1978 if you get it in frame there 1978 and all the stamping and everything there's quite nice and clear and it's in good condition it's not bad at all it's, it's stained and worn as they always are pretty much unless you get an issued one uh, but it's nice to have an early fairly early dated one pre pre 80s dated example there so that is I think I've covered everything there it was quite a quite a good weekend in that regard um, so I hope you found that interesting. As I say, I'm sorry I didn't get more footage of the show itself. Um, hopefully next time I'll have more opportunity to do so. But uh, a busy, busy weekend and uh, a very profitable one in that regard of picking up some nice bits and kit. So I hope you found that interesting. And until next time, bye for now.